Welcome. Everyone's having a good time? Good. Welcome to Discover Your Clio account. This is Irina. I'm Irina. Tell us about yourself. I am a senior product designer at Clio. Basically, my job is to make sure Clio functions the way you expect, that it's intuitive, and that it looks great. And I've been at Clio annoying David in the halls of Clio for about a year and a half now. And this is my best friend, David. <laughs> This is me. Uh, more importantly, that's my dog, Bugsy. I am the customer support manager at Clio, so my job is to manage the customer service. Thank you. If you've ever had any experience with our customer service team, that's my jam. Irina, what are we going to talk about today? So we have a lot to cover in the next hour. We're going to do a little bit of branding. We're going to get uh, a logo into Clio, and then we will customize our bill themes to make sure that they look the way we want them to look. Then we were going to look at the foundation of Clio. So the, this is the everyday stuff. So creating contacts, creating matters for those contacts, and creating time entries. Then David will run, run us through some really powerful customization features. We're gonna look at default rates. We're gonna look at custom fields and permissions. And then we will see how we can save you even more time in Clio with text snippets, live chat, and mobile apps. Uh, and then, we're getting gonna get paid. paid. We're gonna get paid. We're gonna talk about making money. This is Sunshine Coast Law. They are based on the beautiful Sunshine Coast of British Columbia. I don't know if it's beautiful. I've never been there. They're a boutique firm. They have three attorneys. They've been around for about four years. And their mission is to really bring that human touch to their practice uh, and really help their clients in a time of need. So specifically, we have two members of that firm helping us out today. We have Samantha. She is the office manager at Sunshine Coast Law, and Patricia, she is one of the partners. So, first things first, branding. This is an easy step to really make clear your own. So what does Samantha need to do? She's the office manager. She wants to make sure that our firm's logo shows up on our bills. So first thing we need to do is upload our logo into Clear. We want to navigate to the settings option in the navigation at the bottom there. And we're going to spend a lot of time on the settings page. And the very first option in the very first column is account and payment info. So we click on that one. And the very first option that you will see is the ability to upload your logo into Clio. We click the gray choose file button, and then we just find our logo wherever it may be. Ours is right there, we click open. <laughs> and then we click the green upload logo button. And that is really as simple as it is. It doesn't get easier. No, it doesn't get easier. Then you'll see a little uh, preview there. That means the logo has been uploaded. And just we need to make sure that we scroll to the bottom and click the save new information button. Otherwise it won't save. That would be embarrassing. The logo can be a GIF, a JPEG, or a PNG. If those things don't really mean anything to you, I would just suggest uploading a JPEG. Chances are you have your logo in that format. And also the logo shouldn't be bigger than two megabytes in size. And that is just for efficiency's sake. If you are downloading, you know, tens and dozens and hundreds of bills, you don't want to spend that extra time downloading large files. If your logo does happen to be bigger, there's plenty of tools online that are free to help you reduce the size. For example, compressjpeg.com. Yeah, all you need to do is you can upload your logo and then it can comp compress it for you. And it's super simple. One more thing I would recommend is uh, just making sure that there's not um, any white space around your logo because that'll really help it align nicely on your invoice just the way you want. So for example here you can see we have white all around the logo. What we want to do is just to crop that tightly just like that and once again there are free tools available online to help you do this. Imageresize.org. If you check out that site you'll be able to do that cropping there. So next we are going to look at bill themes. So basically bill themes, like we found out in the Kahoot, they are a powerful set of tools to help you customize your bills. Basically make sure that your bills look the way you want, they have the right colors on them, your logos on them, the right information is on them. So what Samantha wants to do is to make sure that the bills Sunshine Coast Law sends out reflect the brand and are structured the way that they want. So let's take a look at where bill themes live. And guess what? Once again, we are going to the settings option, except this time we want to navigate to the very right hand side for Clio settings, second option, it says Billy. When we click on that, we will see that our logo preview is already in there, which is a good sign. That means we've uploaded it correctly. And then if we go to the second tab here, it's called Bill Themes. 
Yep, that is where our build themes are. We'll click on that. Now every account will have one default theme, which is what you can see there. That's the preview for it. And that is the one we want to edit. We can also create a new theme by clicking the green new theme button. And there all I need to do is add the name and save it. We're not gonna do that today. Another option to create a new theme, which is what we'd recommend, is clicking copy. So that will just make a copy of your default. And chances are you'll have a couple of themes that the basics are all the same, but you might have a small tweak that you want to create. So for example, one could be overdue. So you don't want to have to set up all of your things again in a brand new theme. You just create your default with everything you want, and then you click copy. If you want to make your copy the default, just click the set default <coughs> link above the new preview. Now let's take a look at what's inside the theme when you click through. There's a ton of different options as you can see here, and each of those options have sub options and sub options again. And then as you make changes, you will see the preview reflected with those changes below. Cool, and that kind of sums up uh, the structure of build themes and where they live. Now let's take a look at some of the more common customizations that we find. So what we want to look at is making sure the logo is showing on your build. And then we will pull out some, because I'm a designer, I like to mess with colors. We'll pull out some highlight colors to title together with our brand. And finally, we will split our time and expenses. So the time that you work on a client's matter will show in one table and any expenses that you've accrued over the course of the, the time period will show up in another table. Great, so first of all, how do we make sure that our logo is showing on our bill? Well, in the first column, we want to navigate about halfway to firm information. In the second column, the second option is logo. And then in the third column, the very top option is showing. Now we want to make sure that's enabled. And that is how easy it is to show your logo on your bill. You'll notice that there's a few other options in that column as well. And that helps you just control where exactly your logo appears. Maybe you want it um, aligned center or aligned to the right. We're going to keep it aligned left for now. now there's something missing. I think the, the default colors on the table just doesn't really work. So let's uh, edit those colors a little bit. So the way we do that, in the first column, we go to table configuration. Then we have uh, some options around what we want to um, change. So here we have title, heading, row border, odd rows, and even rows. For my example, I have colored in the heading as well as the row border. And in the third options we have we want to go to background color, which is the second one. And finally, you have a ton of swatches that you can choose, or you can put in a hexadecimal value. And if you don't know what that means, I will explain in one second. Do you know? Do you know I, about I, I, I no? totally know what it means. I have no idea. Um, I'm, in fact, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit like color uh, not good. No, color not good. Color okay. not good. So That's fine. I, I color as well as the English. So how can we like make sure we're getting the right colors well, like this? Like so I would first never of all, this is that. what our bill looks like now that we've pulled some of that red from our logo onto it. Yeah. And to help you out, once again, we're going on the internet. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. This tool, palatin.com, say you have a, a nice color in your logo that you like, you can put it into this, into this tool and it will give you a nice color that is complementary and then they'll look good together. If anybody wants help with this, I'll be at the Clear Labs in the next few days. Please, I would love to speak to you about color. Finally, let's split out our time and expenses into separate tables. First column, we go to Matter. Next, we go Line Items in the second column. And the very first option at the top of the list is Split Time Expenses and Products. Make sure that's enabled. And it's that simple. Our time and our expenses will appear in two separate tables. So let's take a look at what we've learned so far. We took a look at uploading our logo into Clio and the options we have there. We've also played around with build themes, adding some color, adding our logo, and splitting time and expenses. So let's move on. Well, first of all, let's see where Sunshine Coast Law are at with discovering their Clio account. They have uploaded their logo into Clio, right. and they created some build themes. So throughout the course of the session, we're going to fill out this map. So let's continue. We have still a whole bunch to cover. Now let's take a look at the foundation of Clear. Now this is the stuff you'll be doing day in, day out, um, creating contacts, 
creating matters and tracking time on those matters. First of all, contacts. This is Samantha. We have a new client that's come into the office, Karen. We need to enter her into Clio. The way we do that is we will navigate again on the left on the left hand side through the navigation to contacts, which is in the middle, a little bit higher than the middle. We click on contacts right there. And you'll see that we haven't created any contacts yet. That's why we're seeing this message. And in the top right hand side, you'll see we can create a new person or a new company. Well, Karen is a person, so we'll click the green new person button. And the only thing that's required here is a first name and a last name. So Karen would, uh, that's all that you need to add in this section, but there's a few things that are really important to add as well. So first of all, adding her email address that you can add in one or many and you can nominate whether it's a work email or a home email, etc. But one needs to be the primary email address. And that's particularly important if you are planning to send Karen bills by email so she can pay them online because the primary email will be the email that that bill gets sent to. Also, a phone number is very handy to have. Again, that could be um, her work phone number, her home phone number. Again, we need a primary one nominated. And that will set that one as primary. We're just going to go to right to the bottom and click save new person and that's it karen is now in clio and once you save that information this is what you'll see here this is all the information we entered about karen and at the very bottom you will see a list of matters that we've created for karen right now there's none there but that is the next topic creating a matter so Karen is in Clio. Uh, unfortunately, Karen is getting a divorce, so we will need to create a matter for that case. Let's take a look at how we do that. We are on Karen's contact card, as it is called. We can create a matter for her through the navigation on the left, but we won't do that. We'll actually collapse that completely to give us more room. Also, we have this brand new global create function, which is very exciting. That will appear at, on any page in Clio, when you click on it, you'll be able to create any one of those items straight away, including a matter. However, since we're in Karen's contact card, we're going to create a matter right from in here. And you can see we've actually created a few already. But what we're going to do now is click the new, the green new button right there. And this now opens the, the new create new matter page and Karen's details are already in there. Then we just need to add a description. Now this is very important because if your contacts have multiple matters, we need to be able to tell them apart. So a description is really key. We will then set the permissions to be everyone. There's also a bunch of other settings um, that you can add, a bunch of other detail, but you don't have to. So for the purposes of time, we're going to create new and we have now created a brand new matter for Karen, which will appear on her contact card in that table. So if you would like to know more about matters, there is a ton more detail that we didn't even touch on. You can go to Why Matters Matter, one of my personal favorite session titles, today in Empire Ballroom C, and that's with Shawi and Teresa. So we've created a contact. We have made a matter for their contact. Now, Patricia, who is working on the case, she needs to log the phone call that she's made with uh, on to Karen's matter. So let's see how she would do that. So this is the matter details page. This is where all of the information on the matter can be seen. And there are a couple of different ways that we can track time on the matter. Again, we can do it globally. So you can do it super easily from the top right hand side. But since we are already in the matter, we are going to go to the second tab on this page, which is activities. We will click on that second tab and you can see we've already tracked some time and an expense on this matter already. But to add a new one, you can do it here on the right, either add a time or add expense. We are tracking a phone call, so we will click the green add time button. You can see that the matter details are already in there. The date is set to today. We will just set the firm user to be Patricia, since it is her that made the phone call. And then we will put in the duration, it was one hour. And you can see that there is a activity category option, which is something you can set on your account for activities that you do um, regularly and set a specific rate for those activities, which David will tell you all about in the next session. 
And you can see now the rate will update to match that activity that we just set. We will add a description, which will be discuss next steps. We're discussing next steps with Karen. We're saving the entry. <laughs> And you can see the description in the table pulls in the activity get category as well as that note that we made about what the call was about. So that will come in together. And that is how easy it is to add a time entry in Clio. So let's take a look at what we just covered. We created some contacts. So this is basically everyone that you come in contact with throughout your day. And we created uh, a matter. This is, these are your case files that you'll be working on. Basically, there's no limit to how many you create. And finally, time entries. These are linked to individual matters and they will be pulled into your bills. Using activity descriptions in order to just make sure you don't, well, you don't, so you don't have to remember all those rates and um, <coughs> type the same thing over and over again will really help, uh, help you out with saving some time. Speaking of which, let's take a look at where Samantha and Patricia are. We have created a contact with Karen, we've created a matter for her, and Patricia was able to track the time that she's worked on her matter. Sweet. What's well, next, David? Yeah, you've been doing a lot of talking. I think I'm it's take time over. for you to talk. All right. Let's do this. Have a seat. Oh, thank you. Take I, I, I don't know. Oh, you've got your own I got my now. own clicker. Moving on up in the world. All right. We're going to talk about customization, um, how to make your Clio account your own. We're going to start right in with rate hierarchies. Clio has really been designed to be able to make it easier for you to bill at a consistent rate so that you're not having to remember, oh, what did we charge them last time? And did we do that right? And oh, what's this person charging? Or what about this case is charging this? And this client's being charged this. Clio is going to remember that for you. And I want to take some time to go through the default rate, what we call the rate hierarchy. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to give you my wannabe legalese. I kind of make it up as I go because I'm not a lawyer. I'm a customer service guy. All right, let's talk a little bit about this. So user default rate is your base rate. Let's say we got Steve. He's the guy that works for me. And Steve, he's going to charge a base rate of $100 per hour. Okay. So he's going to go, he's going to file agreements at a rate of $100 per hour. Fine. Easy. Now, Let's say that I've got a special type of grievance. I don't know if that's a thing. I'm going to file a special type of grievance. I'm going with the I don't know law shtick, by the way. Let's say we're going to charge $150 per hour for that specific activity, that activity description. So despite the fact that he goes ahead and he charges $100 per hour, if we tie on this activity description to it, it's going to charge $150. So it's actually going to supersede his default rate, and it's going to apply whatever rate was uh, attached to that category. Now. Let's say we've got a client that's come in whose name is Matthew Moneybags. Matthew Moneybags, as the name would imply, has a lot of money. So he's actually agreed to let us charge him $200 per hour. So even though I'm filing this special grievance, which has $150 attached to it, and even though my default rate is $100, that's irrelevant because we're going to be charging him $200 per hour as long as it's a case that's associated with him as a client. Is everyone following me? All right, there's more. What about... Matthew comes to me and he says, I've got a very important matter to me. It's about my dog, okay? I'm in this dispute with my ex and we're fighting over the dog. This dog is so important to me that I'm gonna charge me $300 per hour. So we got a great rate from him, it's fantastic. So even though Matthew's default rate is $200 per hour, and even though we charge an activity description rate of 150 and we charge a user rate of $100 per hour, we are now gonna charge how much? 300, everyone's listening, great. We're not done yet. We have our flat rate or non-hourly rate for that activity description. And basically, Matthew said, you know what? I'm done with this case. I want this dealt with. I'm going to give you $10 million for it. Don't we wish? Uh, so we're going to go ahead. He's going to charge that flat rate of $10 million. Now, no matter what the matter rate associated with it is, no matter what the client rate associated with it is, no matter how much you're charging for the activity or no matter how much you're charging for that user is irrelevant because that flat rate is royalty when it comes to these rates. Okay? So you really need to take some time here and apply these appropriately because you are going to save yourself some time. And we're gonna look at an example of it right here. So Patricia says, I don't wanna have to remember the hourly rate when I'm entering time on a matter. Obviously the matter rate is gonna to matter to us in this case. So let's take a look. As Irene has already talked about, we're gonna be spending a lot of our time in the settings section of Clio. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna edit a matter 
here. This is probably the only one where we're not going to be in there. We're going to go down to billing preferences in the edit screen. Now from here, you have the ability to add a custom rate. You pick whichever user, whether it's for one user and whatever rate you want. So the matter rate for $200 per hour for Patricia. Now if I wanted to go and add one for everyone, I could also do that in that same drop down. Just I go ahead, I hit everyone and I put whatever rate I want. I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm going to hit Save Matter. That green bar up top tells me it's been saved successfully. I got a quick button in there for add time. I don't have to go anywhere else. And I'm going to pick Patricia as a user and how much time I'm logging. And lo and behold, the $200 rate has applied immediately. Now, I've actually got Matter Rate written right next to it too, which is very interesting. And if I go and hit that question mark next to the rate, I can actually see a description. So if you're ever not sure, just click there. It's going to give you an idea of where it lands on the hierarchy and why it's charging a certain rate. We want this to be intuitive and we want it to be consistent. That's the very important thing here. Now, if we go back to the matter to go and log some time, sure enough, it would all be there, all nice and packaged for us. Fair enough, everyone understands our default rates? Fantastic. Custom fields. Now, Samantha said to me, I want to see the important information when I look at a matter. Well, who doesn't, right? You wanna be able to see the right information when you want it. I'm gonna just gonna say something bold here. I legitimately think that custom fields and custom field sets are the most underutilized piece of Clio as a software. I deal with people for a living and the amount of them that don't even know the custom fields exist blows my mind. So I really want us to take some time to take a look at it. So like I said, we're going to be spending a lot of time in settings today. So we go over to the settings bar on uh, the far side of the screen and we're going to click on custom fields. Now, once we're in there, we have the ability to create various fields depending on what we want to do. In this case, we're looking at a divorce case and unfortunately children do get caught up in divorce from time to time. So we're going to go ahead and create some fields to document the names and the ages of the children associated with this case. So we've created a custom field called oldest child and we've collect, we selected a text type field. Now you've seen from that dropdown uh, as we go through it that there's multiple different types of fields you can create. You can create check boxes. You can pick calendar dates out of the calendar dropdown. You can pick monetary value. The idea here is that you can basically create a custom field of any type that you want. So we've gone, we've created names and we've created ages for the children. So we've got a number value for the age and a name and a text value for the names. Now, from this, we can create what's called a field set. And basically, it allows us to lump a bunch of our custom fields into one set of custom fields. Exactly, right? Just one piece that we can add in one go. So we're going to create a custom field set called children, and we're going to drop from the drop down, select all four of those fields we've just created. So now we've created a custom field set called children, which includes the oldest and youngest child's name and the oldest and youngest child's age. We're going to use the recent drop down at the top to go back to our matter, and we're going to edit that matter. Now, once we're in there, we go down to the custom field section, the third one down, it's collapsible. Just click there, perfect. And if ever we want to create a custom field set, we could also do it from here. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna select children. And just like that, it's gonna populate all four of the fields that we've just created into that matter. Now, when we've created our custom fields and we've created our custom field sets, we can actually set them as default or as required fields on our matters. So if you've created these custom fields that you think you're gonna use all the time, set them as default when you create a matter. So you make a matter, it's gonna pop up right away. You don't even have to go through this last step. Now we've got the names, we've got the ages, and lo and behold, it's all there and it's in the matter. Now, this is important because you can customize it and some firms, I want you to think about this, some firms have hundreds of customizable pieces of information that they need to put in on a case-by-case -case basis. The concept of ROI, return on investment, in terms of building out the infrastructure for your firm is so important. I can't stress this enough. The amount of clients that I talk to that say, I don't have time to set this up. My response is, you, you don't have time to not set this up. If you put the legwork in now, I guarantee it's gonna give back to you tenfold uh, permission. So Patricia says that it's important that the correct people have access to information in Clio, and that's fair. Uh, in a law firm, you want to make sure that people are seeing the right stuff when they're supposed to be seeing it. So let's take a look at two ways we can manage permissions. Again, in the settings section, if we go to manage users, uh, we can look at it on an individual basis. So this is a way to edit anything in our users kind of realm, uh, but particularly permissions is the third column here. If I hit edit under, permission, under Patricia's name, I'm going to get all the things I can edit for her as a user. At the very bottom, we've got the four levels of permission, whether it's administrator, accounts, reports, or billing. Uh, we're gonna get into what these four differences are in just a second. Uh, basically, I can set whatever I want and hit save. A second way I can look at this information is to go back to settings and to go to gr groups, permissions, and job titles. Now, if I go to the second tab under permissions, 
I've got all of my users and exactly what level of permission they have. This is particularly useful if you have a large firm. If you have 50 people, 60 people, whatever it is, if you have a bigger firm, this is a great way to look granularly on a permission by permission basis, uh, who has what. Now, if ever you're not sure what these levels of permission are, you can go to our support site from the little question mark shortcut in the app and click on permissions. Now, if you go to the user permissions page, it's got a breakdown of each individual one. The high level of it, they've got more detail here, but basically an administrator can manage settings, pretty much everything across the board, minus uh, you know actually owning the account. Um, accounts is access to banking information, any accounting information, anything that's financially sensitive to the firm. Uh, reporting is the ability to run reports. So if you run or run, you know, an originating attorney report, whatever it is, only people with that reporting capability are able to do that. And last but not least is billing, and that's pretty straightforward. You have access to the bills section of the interface. So whether or not you can or cannot access people's bills, uh, approve them, run payments on them, etc. So, for our takeaways. We've learned about custom fields, allowing you to capture important information, and that works on the contact or on the matter level. And we've looked at custom field sets and how we can group individual custom fields together into various groups depending on how you'd like to manage that area of your practice. We also looked at default rates, the hierarchy, everything starting from a user default rate all the way up to a flat rate activity description. And last but not least, we looked at permissions, determining the level of appropriate access uh, when it comes to your firm. So if we take a look at this map, we've done everything Irina's done, and now we've added some customization. We've added those custom fields, we've added those default rates, and we've added the permissions. Now we're going to tag team the saving time section, so go for it. All right, so first of all, I'd like to tell you about my absolute favorite feature of Clio, the text snippet. This is the unsung hero of all of them. Basically, what it lets you do is nominate a set of characters that when you type them, will expand to, to show a phrase. So you don't have to, if you say you take a lot of phone calls, you don't have to type phone call into your activities over and over again. Maybe the text snippet can be PC. Every time you type PC, it will expand. Now, it sounds small, but when you have to do it over and over again, that can really add up. So let's take a look at setting up text snippets as well as text snippets in action. So, like I promised, we are going to the settings page. Uh, and now we're going to the middle column. Uh, towards the bottom is text snippets. Here we will see every text snippet that we have set up. And to create a new one, we just click the green add button. Now, in this case, we're going to say we do a lot of telephone conferences. The text snippet, TC, will now expand to say telephone conference every time we type it. We want to, yeah. yeah. Wanna, I, I don't believe you. I don't believe we you. We want to make sure that whole word is enabled, and then we click this green save button. It will then appear in the table there in alphabetical order. So let's take a look at text snippets in action. We want to create a time entry, we click the blue add time button, and then in description we type TC, and then Whoa. bam, oh, it expands straight away. <laughs> That's the reaction, it always gets that reaction. I love it, every time. So something to keep in mind too is like this can be used for huge portions of text too, not small little bits. Yeah. And these are set on a user by user basis, so uh, everyone in your firm will have their own set of text snippets. Okay. Is there a way to share with users? Yeah. Is it completely independent? Like if I were an administrator, share between users? Yeah. So right now no. that isn't available, but that's a really good suggestion. Yeah. David, it's your turn. Yeah, so I'm just thinking about that suggestion. And so thinking about it so heavily that I'm not looking at the thing I'm most excited about, which is live chat. I want to talk a little bit about this because Samantha's basically told us that she wants to be able to get help with Cleo when she wants an answer and she wants it right away. We've introduced what we're calling our live chat feature. It's a little widget at the bottom of the interface right there. You click, you have your name and your email's already been added and you select whatever department you're looking at, you hit message, you type it in and you send it off. It's pretty straightforward. How do I create a trust request? We hit start chatting and an agent's gonna pop up, Jordan, one of my all-stars, he's gonna go in there, he's gonna write an answer, this is how you do it. Now something to keep in mind, a lot of these chat features that you see these days are AI, um, they're bots, not us, these are real people. In fact, when we recorded this video, Jordan made a, a little bit of a boo-boo and he quickly corrected himself and I decided to keep it because these are humans that are behind this, right? He sent out a link and then he quickly realized that the link didn't actually 
connect, so he followed up with it right after. Um, and it's very, very important to remember that, that these are the real people that would usually answer your phone calls or they would usually answer your tickets. And for us in Clio Support, this has been an absolute game changer and it's just the beginning of what we're doing. Um, in high volume times, I was able to announce to the company the other day that we were able to cut our response time into a third of what it was before we rolled this piece out. That's massive. For my organization, this is a game changer. This is what's going to revolutionize the way that we can help you. So if you're writing us tickets, stop. Get the answers right away. Chat into us. I've got the people that are just literally waiting to talk to you. That's, that's what they're there for. So please use this feature. Now, a few people have said that it sit kind of weirdly in the old interface, but in the new uh, design of the new experience, we kept the chat widget in mind, so it's not going to be in the way, not going to be blocking anything, because um, I know that did come up in a few, in a few people that I've had a conversation with. Uh, basically, it's offered extensively, so use it. I love it. I'm so excited. So I just want to also touch on the Clio mobile apps. So do yourself a favor, install one of these apps. We have one for your iPhone, or if you are not an iPhone user, if you have an Android, we have an Android app as well. And these are awesome. They basically let you take your practice wherever it is that you're going. You're not in the office all day long, so Clio doesn't need to be in the office all day long. You're able to basically create anything from wherever you are. It has the same global create functionality. It also gives you a great overview of your day, whatever tasks you have to do that day, as well as your appointments. So a nice overview of your schedule. And you're able, it's easy to track your time when you're away from your desk. So we save some time with text snippets, had a look at live chat, and finally, mobile apps. All right, great. Last section, make some money. Set. Let's do it. Time to make some money. Uh, but before we do, if you, before you can charge your clients, you gotta make sure you're billing properly. So we've got a few billing sessions that you may wanna check out. Happening in Empire Ballroom C today at 150. This is taking billing to the next level. Let's talk a little bit about Clio payments. Uh, we're coming up on time here, so we're gonna go over a few things real quick. The Legal Trends Report, as Jack has talked about, finds that law firms that are using Clio payments are literally getting paid 35% faster than law firms using traditional methods of payment. That's massive. This is... Uh, revolutionary tool that we're very excited to have. We introduced it last year. Uh, it's available to our boutique and our elite subscribers, so feel free to come, to, if you don't have access to it, come talk to us over in the Clio lab. We have our reps there who can talk to you about what your uh, subscription looks like. So obviously they need to get fast and easy payment for their clients, and that's where Clio Payments comes in. It's powered by LawPay, so you do have to have a LawPay account. But basically, it takes three easy steps to get this going. Number one, you're gonna activate your LawPay account, which is Wave, the fee is waived by Clio, so we're gonna pay that activation fee for you, so you don't have to worry about that, we're covering that for you. Second is you're gonna send your bill off to your clients, and then third, they're literally just gonna put in their credit card information and send you the money back. They don't have to sign up, they don't have to put any fill out any forms, nothing like that, it's quick. Activate, send the bill, they put their credit card in, you make money. That's, <laughs> that's what we're looking for, right? Doesn't get simpler than that. We have a session specific on this. This is run by Rob Format, who's our CFO, and John Porter from LawPay. They're doing a joined piece, half an hour crash course on how to best get paid in Clio, and they're gonna be focusing very heavily on Clio payments powered by LawPay. So what we learned about paying money is pretty straightforward, that if you're on the boutique or the elite plan, you can use Clio payments, your clients will pay with credit card, you'll get paid faster. Pretty straightforward. Do you want to conclude? Yeah, let's do let's this. Let's conclude. So let's cover our map for Sunshine Coast Law one more time. So first of all, we uploaded our logo into Clio. Mm -hmm. We created some bill themes to make sure that they look and are structured the way we want. We then had Karen come into our firm, so we created a contact for her. We created a matter for her divorce. And Patricia was able to track some time that she worked on that. We then customized our piece with some custom fields. We took a look at the default rates and we added some permissions in there as well. Yep, then we did a little bit of time saving with everyone's favorite tech snippet. As well as the live as chat well feature. As, that's right. And we ended that section with a quick overview of the mobile apps. And last but not least, made, made some money. That's right. Took a look at some information around billing and finally, so that was a really fast hour. We've got lots of opportunity. Why are you going so fast through the slides? We've got lots of opportunity to be helping you throughout the conference. So make sure that you're checking out the sessions that we mentioned. Come visit the Smart Bar. My support staff is here. We want to support you. We want to help you. Come and talk to us. They're really nice. Uh, Come see me at Clear Lab, <coughs> me and my coworkers. Um, give us all of your feedback about the new Clear experience. Yeah. I just want to say that you guys have been great to support. This class was great. 
Awesome. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.